Hello, everyone. Bridges from Nathan Sagas and Chan with Memphis wide receiver Calvin Austin. Thank you for joining me today. What's up, bro? No problem. No problem. Good to be here. Anytime. I'll start with my first question. How old were you when you started playing football and doing track? So I started doing track first. So I started doing track when I was around, I was probably like seven. I ran in my first track meet and, um, I, I won my first race, and so from then on, my dad had, had me doing track. So I started track first when I was seven. So I would I honestly say track was like my first love, and then I started playing football. I mean, I always would play football with my cousins. We'll do two-hand touch and stuff, but I started playing flag football in third grade. So that was my first time playing, like, organized flag football for school. And then my first year playing tackle football was fifth grade, and then I played that on, so – Track was probably my first love, but I started football. But I, I've always loved loved football too. Track was like the first sport that you had, and you got into and like winning your first meet at age seven. Nice, kept on with that. Yep, that, that that's exactly how it was. I was like, my dad was just like, "Hey, you want to sign? I signed you up for a track meet this weekend." And like, I I obviously knew about track just from watching on TV and stuff like that. And so, and then I, I've always would just be running at school. You know how at school you'll be like, who's the fastest, all that. So like, I knew I had pretty nice speed. So it, it was, but it was good to like go against other people and like to actually compare it. And that your dad signed you up for it. Yep, I said, good thing my dad did for sure. Yeah, like he said, like seeing who's fastest, that's what like run to the tree and back. Like, and <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say all that, and, uh -huh. and especially field day. Field day uh -huh. would be the big time showcase. Did you play any other sports? Uh, yeah. So I played basketball. Well, when I was younger, I played basketball and I, and I did soccer too. Um, I had to stop doing soccer because it was the same season as track. But honestly, since I was fast, I was actually pretty good at soccer. I didn't have the the footwork down, but like, but like, I was pretty good at soccer. But basketball was probably my was probably my other sport. I started playing that when I was young little too so probably like eight when I started playing basketball and and in high school that was obviously my last time playing but we won state my junior year and we made the state each of my years playing varsity so my 10th 11th and 12th so so basketball was fun for sure the basketball and soccer you also played in basketball you have like all good memories from that oh yeah I got a lot of good good memories that's why I said state it's crazy. In our state game, my junior year, we were down by 31 points. And we ended up coming all the way back to win the state championship game. It was crazy. Like, we was in the throwing in the locker room. I was, like, just thinking, I'm like, we got to make this at least look a little more respectable than getting beat by 31 in the state game. So, but then, you know, we just kept on, kept on chipping away, chipping away. And next thing you know, we took the lead and ended up winning the game in overtime. You did more than just make it look more respectful. You won it. <laughs> I about to say, yeah, we ended up taking it. At what point in your high school career did you know you could go D1? Uh, so this is actually kind of a that's, a, that's a very good question. So I actually believed my whole time that, like, I was, even when I was in the seventh, eighth, grade I was thinking I'm like okay when I get into going into my senior year and when offers start coming in I was like I'm gonna be able to pick wherever I want to go Oregon Ole Miss Alabama whatever school I want to go to like I'm gonna have all those options Ohio State it, it doesn't matter so as it started getting close to like 10th 11th grade I'm like waiting for all the offers to come but you know they weren't coming like the like the other people were receiving and obviously it was because of my size at, at the time so I've always believed that I could go D1 and I always believed that I was meant to play D1 at, at the highest level I just always had that confidence in myself and my dad also was just like his confidence in me also allowed me to have even more confidence that I can compete against those guys because anytime I would go to camps and stuff like that I would always be able to compete and be one of the top top performers but because of my size it would be like it wouldn't I would get no type of um recognition for it so 
I like, like the question said, I've always believed, believed I could go D1, but because of my size and stuff, it was, I guess, coaches and other D1 schools didn't see me fit for them yet. Do you always believe that you could go D1 from middle school, but like coaches, since your size, they didn't offer you at first? Yeah, that was definitely it. And I mean, I knew coming, I, I knew that would be a, um, be a hindrance, I guess, but I always knew that I, I could compete. That that was my whole thing. As long as I knew that my that I could compete at the size I met with those guys, I was like, I'm not worried about anything. I said, I know it'll all work out. You know it'd work out. Yep. Coming out of high school, what made you choose Memphis? Um, so like we were talking about earlier, I've always been a Memphis fan. So even when we would go to the game, when it would be a couple thousand maybe at the game, all you could just get a you could just get a five dollar ticket and go all the way to the front. I've always been a fan, and I've always was like, man, how D'Angelo came and turned this program around. The city loves him. He just really changed the whole outlook of the football. I was like. I want to be be that person for the time because the time when I was younger and was going to the game, we were going two and ten during some years. We'll go one and one and nine, one and ten. We'll go three and eight, something like that, you know. So we were always had um, losing teams, and so I was like, I want to be that person that comes in and changes the whole outlook of the program. You know, I, I'm I'm from the city, so I was like that. I always thought I was like I'm gonna come to Milford one day and be that person. And I didn't know how it would look or how it would turn out, but, you know, I'm just blessed to be in this position that that, that I'm in now. Like, always being a Memphis fan, and, like, you had always gone to the games, like I had said earlier, and then wanting to, like, turn around the program and make it, like, where fans come and, like, and be a hometown hero since you're from there. I about to say, yeah, that was one of the big things, is like, that being that, like, having that – um that hometown hero field was definitely one of the main like reasons I wanted to come to Memphis and try to just and just to give Memphis my all. And then like your legacy, you remember? Yep, that's that's exactly what it is. I want it to be. What was it like qualifying for the NCAA Track Outdoor Championships? Um, that was honestly one of my like highlights of my entire just college in general. Um, well, really my athletic career, because like I said, when I was younger, I would always watch track. And so they would always have the nationals at, um, at Hayward Fields in, in U Eugene, Oregon. So ever since I was little, I mean, I never really just thought about running there, but I was like, that would obviously be a dream because like I see it on TV all the time, Olympians run there. And so once I started um, when I got to college. I was, I was recruited out of high school to to to, to run track, and so um, once I got to Memphis and and started running, um, and time and it got closer to being conference and regionals and stuff. I was like, I kind of I didn't really understand the process of getting the nationals about like qualifying, how many people go and all that. But once I started getting that down, I was like, whoa, we have a real shot of, you know, making it to, of making it to Eugene. And so um, I guess I didn't know how good a track team we were going to have. And so once we qualified that regional, I think my first one I qualified in the four by four, um, that was honestly a surreal feeling because we came in not with the time, we were going to be like four or five spots out. So we had to run faster than we had to like, be some teams out to be, be to be able to qualify and you know the race we ran it, it, it was raining that day so it was a really gritty it was a gritty performance by all of us and once we saw that that cue beside our name we saw that we qualified we went crazy so like after the reason we went to nationals and that whole experience was great just seeing the stadium like walking out for the relay to start it was just like I took all that in because I can I could still remember watching it on TV and wanting to be there. It was crazy. Like at first you didn't really like know the process. Like when you first were running with them, once you knew you realized like you had the shot to go there. <laughs> yeah. 
It started, oh, yeah, but I say, yeah, once I realized we got the shot, I'm like, whoa, like, we can actually do, do we can actually do this thing. And then I started getting nervous and stuff. Because for track, I'm not going to lie, that, that's that's the one sport that, gets, that, like, works my nerves. So I was like, we got a, we got a big job to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. Go to Eugene. Go to Eugene, yep. What was the experience like for you when you won the AAC championship? Ah, uh, that was a that was that was a great experience too. Um, all those moments, I feel like going into the season or whatever, you don't really, you can't really imagine. Or, I mean, you, you it can be one of your goals, but you can't really just like imagine that feeling or like just think about it all too much. So, like when we saw when so when the time started kicking off after. And when it started, time started ticking off, we saw it go away. And, like, we realized we won. We was just, like, we won conference. Like, this hasn't been done where Memphis has outright, has outright won the conference. And it had been, like, 40, 50 years. It had been a long time. So that whole experience was crazy, too. And, you know, um, the whole team, I feel like that, that season, we had so many weapons and pieces. And – it was just all about getting everything together and because we knew we could do it. It was just that we all had to be on the same page and trust each other. And you know, you know how teams are. Sometimes if you have one bad apple, it can ruin the whole, it can ruin the whole everything. So one thing we wanted to do that season was just, you know, stick together. And so being able to stick together and win the um, conference at the end, I mean, I mean, everyone was happy, and to see how like the city reacted, it was just a great. It was just a. It was just a great experience. It was a great experience, like do something Memphis hadn't done for a long time, and like the city, like exactly. just everyone celebrating, and then like just winning it. Yeah, about to say definitely, and so like you could just see on like on Twitter how much support support we were getting and stuff, and obviously the fans are always great, so. It was just a, it was just a great experience. What has been your favorite moment from college football so far? Uh, my greatest m- moment probably my favorite would probably be um probably what we talked about earlier the, it would probably be the Cotton Bowl. Um, that one was since I'm a Cowboys fan, playing in in their stadium and experiencing the locker room and all that stuff, like it gave me kind of a uh, feeling like, man, like this is not just for the Cowboys, but just like being in the, being in the NFL, it kind of like gave me a, um, a closer uh, real, realization of my goals and dreams. So I was like, I want to be able to play at a stadium like this one day and like be able to come, come in here like this. And so, but for the Cotton Bowl, I mean, being able to spend that what week leading up to the game in, in Dallas, and it was like that whole experience was great. Like the food was good at our hotel. I forgot the name of it, but it had a mall in it and everything. And so it was just great. And then playing against Penn State was um, obviously a good experience because we wanted to be able to prove ourselves against like a big time team. And I think going into that season, they had only scored like allowed like the most points was like 17. So I think we ended up scoring like 30 something points. So one of our things was like, we want to prove ourselves against like a, um, uh, a big time team. And so it's, uh, it's disappointing when you get the win, but that still really didn't take away from the, from the experience because, you know, I, I still feel like we came in there and, um, and, and proved something to, to, to the college football world. It was a great experience, like being able to play at AT and T Stadium and like even a Cowboys mm-hmm. and and like just the whole experience in general, being in Dallas and then getting to prove like that you could compete with all Power Five school. Definitely, that that was I say it was really just like, I guess you could see it like as Milford, we were going into like a big time stadium, going into big time school. We were just trying to you know trying to prove trying to prove pr- prove ourselves really. Going into this season, what are your goals? Uh, I got some big goals going into this season. Um, last season, um, I really, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really have any goals in mind, but just to, one of my goals was just to get a starting job and to 
just make plays. I didn't really have anything in like set in stone, but this season I'm kind of like my whole mindset is changing and all that. So I have some big goals. You know, one of mine is to be, you know, is obviously to get back to win conference for, for our team. Um, I would love to, you know, to to experience that 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 again, like you said, for um, my teammates and the fans again. And you know, another one of my goals will also be to win the um, Belitnikov and be a be an All American. So you know, those are obviously really big goals. It's gonna require a lot of hard work, but you know, that's kind of like what I want. Um, I'm a person that likes competition, and I love a challenge, and so. I, I know if I'm my hardest challenge and my biggest opponent, I know that like I can defeat anything then. So that's one of the things that I did this year, set some really high goals and expectations so I can let my work match those goals and expectations. Yeah, like a lot of big goals, but you know, you can do it. And like, you you like to have challenges and I just can't back away from it and that you'll be able to accomplish them. Yeah, and that's definitely, yeah, exactly, because, you know, it would be easy to say, oh, I want to score five touchdowns and catch 40, 50 passes. Like, yeah, those are goals that I know I can reach, but if you're going to have some goals, it should be something that should challenge you and make you uncomfortable and make you push harder to get. Uh -huh, like, not saying that you could just do, like, easily, like, that you're going to have to really work hard for. Yep, dig deep. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who is your favorite football player? So my favorite current football player is probably, I would have to say, this is a tough one. Because I would probably say right now, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is probably my favorite, my, my favorite player. Um, obviously, he's a speed guy. And so I kind of, my and I, I would kind of say I'm, I, I'm a speed guy, too. And so just – but also just the way that, like, when he came into the league and in college, he was never thought of as a route runner. But, like, his routes and stuff has um, improved tremendously. And you can just tell it has because, like, he's worked on it and um, just trained all offseason just to get better at that stuff. And so that's something I had to do myself with, with, with my routes was – because my routes wasn't where, where they needed to be and his weren't either. And so, you know, like, like, like I said, love competition and, and challenges. So just being able to um, work to get on that on, on that top tier level is what, you know, he did and is what I'm still working to do. And so that's why I would say he's probably one of my favorite. He's probably my favorite player right now. So Tyree Kale, because like, like his speed, he's a speedster and he's fun to watch. Yep. Too. And like, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> And I like carry similar play style to you and like working on routes, like you said. Exactly. About to say, we, I would say, yeah, we would have a similar play, a similar play style. And I would say work ethic as well, because he, I'd be watching his video. He's a guy that he, he, he really works hard for, for what, what he wants. He does for sure. Yeah. And you kind of answered my next question because you said you try and model your game after Tyreek. Uh, I would say yes, as far as, um, how he can control his his speed during his routes and come out his breaks, I would say I definitely watch that because um, for faster guys, coming at stopping and restarting is what people look for. And see, can you come out? Can can you stop when you're going full speed? And can you get up back up through? Can you reaccelerate back to um, full speed? So he's one, and another guy would probably be um, Devonte Adams because I like his patience and during his release and his like route manipulation so though he, he would be one too and Stefan Diggs Stefan Diggs is a guy that he's a you watch his videos he working all the time and so I definitely am a guy that like I I watch people moves and try to steal and emulate them and try to put them in it put them into my own game so those are probably some some of the guys that I um, watch for Tyree killed Devontae Adams and Stefan Diggs. Yep, some greats. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like Devontae. He's my favorite receiver. For real, Devontae, yeah. That boy cold. That boy cold. He went to Fresno State, and I live in Fresno. Oh, for real? I didn't know uh -huh. that. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I about to say, I bet 
I, I bet he's a big time guy out there, huh? Yeah, he is. And him and Derek Carr played together. Okay, they were so they were so so, so he had a um, nice quarterback <laughs> throwing uh-huh. the ball all the time. <laughs> he came from Palo Alto. Palo Alto, okay. So man, so that's Cali, right? Uh huh. Yep. That's like that's where Stanford is. Stanford, okay. I about to say, I know I heard of it. How would you describe yourself off the field? Uh, off the field, I would say I'm more of a, I'm kind of laid back. Um, I'm kind of goofy, you could say. Uh, I like to just, I like to, I don't like to go out too much. Like I'm somewhat of an introvert, but I'm I'm an introvert, but I enjoy company at times, you know, and so just hanging out with some of my teammates and friends and just like chilling like that and just like laughing and talking. That's some of the like stuff that like I enjoy the most. Like I'm not a big person who likes to go out and stuff like that. So off the field, I'm kind of a really relaxed and laid and, and laid, laid back guy. Um, I like to just, I really like to, I ain't gonna lie. I, I watch a lot of Netflix and Amazon prime HBO max. <laughs> I'll be watching a, a whole lot of that. But also, I watch um, I watch YouTube a lot. So I, I'm really just a guy that I, I like to um, learn a lot, look at new things, and just really I enjoy nature and stuff. So I like watching nature documentaries and all that stuff. Yeah, you like make sure I see like and hang out with like friends and family and like watching TV. Yeah, like- but I say family too. Yeah, but I say because you know my my since, since I'm from Memphis, I'm still able to go home throughout the week and see my and I have four sisters, so being able to still be close and see, and see them while I'm in college doing this is, is, is really special. So it's cool because, like, not everyone gets that. Like, they go away. Yep. I about to say, yeah, because everybody, you know, a lot of people only get a certain amount of times a year to come back home. So it's, it, it is a blessing for me to be able to go there whenever I can. Definitely. And the last question I was for fun. You get to take any three NFL players to dinner. They could be past or present. Who are you taking? Okay, so let me see. I would probably say Chad Ochocinco, Deion Sanders, and I want to say Barry Sanders because he was my He's probably my all one of my all time favorite players, but I'll probably say Michael Irvin just because of his personality and he played for the Cowboys. So I'll probably say them three because for, for one, they're all Hall of Famers and legends. And then just their personality, they're all um very vibrant. So you know it, that would be it'll be a very funny dinner for sure. <laughs> But also, they have an extensive knowledge of football and stuff. So being able to listen to them talk football, receiver stuff, DB stuff, you know, I would soak all that in. So I'd be like, it'll, it'll be a funny dinner, but an educational one for sure. It would be funny with Chad Ochocinco and Deion <laughs> Sanders and Michael Irvin. There, I'm about to say, there are some characters for sure. Chad would want to go to McDonald's. <laughs> I'm about to say, that's exactly where you want to go, get some Big Macs. Uh huh. Because <laughs> like when he said he would have Joe Burrow on a diet or something like that, he's okay. <laughs> he said he would take him to McDonald's in the morning. Yeah. I, take the <laughs> <laughs> I said I don't think I don't, I don't think Joe Burrow would want that. Um, I, I don't think he would want that diet. <laughs> he's funny. No, but I said he is funny. That would be a fun dinner for sure. Definitely, definitely. All right, thank you for joining me today. Those are the questions I have. All right, bro. Thank you for doing this with me, bro. Anytime. Thank you.